Badly shaken up, a little scratch. You'll be all right. Sure. Lucky that big piece there didn't suck you. All right, it's all over. Break it up. Bro. How about standing up? Come on, get going. Yeah. I'm all right, thanks. You'd like to come with us for a checkup? No, I better get home to my wife. She worries if I'm late. Name and address. My name is Frank Thompson, 169 North Rutherford. Stick around while I pick up a few names of witnesses. Remember now, if you don't feel so hot, drop in at the hospital and have yourself looked at. I will, thanks. Hey, mister! Don't forget your hat! Oh, thanks. This isn't mine. Sure it is. I seen it on you when you fell down. What? Don't you know your own hat, mister? Okay, now. Now, wait a minute. There's something wrong here, officer. This hat and this cigarette case don't belong to me. He had that on when he fell down. I seen it. And he took that out of his pocket. Beat it. Say, what part of town is it? 22nd and Tillery. Well, what am I doing here? Don't you know? I've never been here before in my life. There's no reason why I should be here. Can't even remember how I got here. You sure you don't want to go someplace and lay down for a little while? No. I'm going to get away from here. How can I get home? How can I get to North Rutherford Street? Well, that's way uptown. The yeah, L is three blocks over. East side subway's down the street there. Or you can get the Green Line bus. That's it. Thanks. Here. Thinking of taking your old flat back? It's vacant again. The last tenants moved out only a week ago. What are you talking about? What's happened? Well, I'm sure I couldn't say what's happened. Your wife didn't take me into her confidence when she moved away. Moved? But I it was only this morning I said goodbye to her at that very door. I'm sure you're feeling quite well, Mr. Thompson. Where's she gone? Tell me where I can find her. Please. Tell me. She's living around in Anderson Street, second building from the corner, apartment 4A. Virginia, what is this? What's it all about? What happened? This apartment. Your name over the doorbell. Your maiden name. What did you do it for? Why did you move? What reason, what possible reason could you have had to do such a thing without telling me? Frank. Frank. Virginia, stop it. Frank, I... Went home, you weren't there. I. She told me, Mrs. Webb, that. Well, tell me, tell me, there must be some explanation. It doesn't make sense. It's like a bad dream. Well, you've come back, Frank. I knew you. Why shouldn't I come back? A 
Come back? From where? Why do you say that? When I left for the office this morning, did I say or do anything that made you think I wasn't coming back? This morning? Yes. You kissed me goodbye. You called out after me. Sure you got your muffler? It's cold out. Frank, what are you saying this morning? I moved here over a year ago. The weather alone ought to tell you that. It's warm out. You're not wearing your muffler or even your coat now. You left me in the winter. And now it's spring. We've both read of cases like this. Amnesia. On your way to the office that last morning, something must have happened to you. Some accident, some blow. Just like what happened tonight. You just didn't know who you were anymore. You forgot where you were going. Forgot to come home to me. What must you have thought? What you must have gone through? Darling, you're back. And that's all that counts. But you... How did you manage to get along? I got a job. Several. Modeling, typing in an advertising agency. And I did very well, too. Of course, I haven't been working lately, but there's enough in the bank to keep us going until you get started again. Did they ever call up from the office? Naturally. I told them you'd had a nervous breakdown. I was too proud to let anybody know I didn't know where you were, that you left me without a word. Oh, poor Virginia. I wonder... If there's a chance, they'd take me back. Well, I don't see why not. You were the head of your department. Mr. Clark was always terribly fond of you. I don't know. I don't know which way to turn. What to do or what to think. I can't think. Can't remember. You will. But don't worry about it tonight. Just rest. Or hold on to the things you're sure of. You're home. You're safe. And I'm with you. Say, Frank Thompson, you don't look much like you've had a nervous breakdown. I'm all right now. Wouldn't be here. Yes, sir. Mr. Clark says for you to go right in. Well, well, the return of the prodigal. Come right in, Frank. Here. You better familiarize yourself with all these new accounts first, Frank. Then we can pick it up from there and you'll be all set. All right, thanks, Mr. Clark. If there's anything else you want to know, just give me a buzz.
Stop! Sorry, mister. Red light. You didn't have any trouble getting organized at the office today, did you? Frank. I said you didn't have any trouble remembering today. I mean, people and things. The way they were before you went away. Did you? Not a bit. Well, that's good. I'm sure you'll be able to recall what happened in that other time. I hope you're right. So lovely out. How would you like to take a little stroll somewhere? Or maybe go to a picture, huh? No. No, I... I don't want to go anywhere tonight. All right. Hello? Yes? Just a moment, please. It's your office. Hello? Oh, yes, Miss Peabody. I was working a little late tonight, Mr. Thompson, and a call came through for you. Someone wanted your telephone number. Who was it? Well, he didn't give any name. No name at all? No, he just said he was a very old friend of yours. He saw you coming out of the building tonight, but lost you in the crowd. So he came back and made inquiries and... You didn't give him my number, did you? Well, yes, I did give him the number. I, I hope you don't mind. No, not at all. Don't give it another thought. There is something you're keeping from me. No, darling. It's only that I can't remember. I can't remember.
I'll go around the back and watch the fire escapes. Virginia, Virginia, wake up. Yeah? Now, don't be frightened. We've got to get out of here now. No light. They might see us. Ooh. There's no time to talk. There's not even time for you to get dressed. Just get into your shoes and hurry. I'll get your coat. Where's your handbag? In the top drawer. Frank, what is that? There's no time now. Fire escape. to go to your mother's and stay there till you hear from me. No. At least whatever happens, I'll know you're safe. And don't try to get in touch with me in any way. I don't know who they are or why they're after me. I only know that I've got to keep you out of this. Please, Frank, I'm not afraid. Let me see it through with you. No. When a man falls in quicksand, he doesn't reach up and pull those he loves down with him. Goodbye for now. I've got to find out what this is before I dare come into your life again. If you love me, you'll do what I ask you. I won't have a moment's rest until I see you again. Until I hear you say that everything is all right. Please, God, that won't be long. Where to, folks? Round the park for two bucks. Lady will tell you where she wants to go. OK. Goodbye for a little. Goodbye, darling. Somewhere down here is the answer. Some place there's somebody that's got to recognize me. Remember me. Say hello. And then... Nobody I ever saw in my life. Nobody that ever saw me from the looks on their faces. Coffee. 
That's what I can use. Could you give me any old dish again, huh? Why, is this the same place I brought her before? I mean, you know, all these pawn shops look alike to me. Three times you've been in here with this now. To me, this is the best known cigarette case in the neighborhood. You said you keep the ticket stubs or whatever they're called after the article's been once redeemed? Sure. What address are you gonna give me this time? What address did I give you last time? A phony, a vacant lot. Say, who did you think it was fooling? I looked it up. Nobody. How much? Four dollars. I'm losing money. you recognize me? We get a lot of people here. Yes, sir. Come right in. Sit down. No waiting. Come in, mister. No waiting. What do you mean, no waiting? All day long, walking up and down this cockeyed street. I'm dead. Peep out of anybody. I've got to get out of this. I've got to find something that'll help me remember. Maybe if I had a drink. Something cold, a beer. Beer. Just say so in the first place. What are you doing on the open street like this? Well, I was watching the fire. Have you lost your mind? Come on inside before somebody sees you. What are you trying to do, throw yourself away? Don't you know crowds are the worst place for you? Get into the apartment, quick. Hurry. I'll look around and see if anyone's tailing you.
Danny, where are you going? Well, I... What's the matter with you? Go on up. Danny, better keep away from that window. What are you doing in this part of town anyway? Don't you realize they've been watching you too? Well, I had to come back to find out things. Well, haven't you been reading the papers? Yes, sure, but uh, you must know more than I do. All I know is that Joe Marucci has sworn to get you. Joe Marucci? Oh, Dan. Dan, darling, you don't know what it's been like these last few days. Well, aren't you going to kiss me? Why are you so worried about me? Why am I so... Oh, you. Why do I love you like this? You're no good and you never will be. Dan, what are we going to do? You've got to help me. I know. I know. I've been racking my brain trying to think how. Give me a cigarette. And let's just be happy together for a few minutes anyway. We may never have another chance. Wait, I want to make a wish. There. You ought to know what it was. That they'll never get you. That they'll let me keep you like this to myself forever. Forever is a long time. How long has it been now? You seem to have lost track of time a little. A week. Just one little week. All our plans, all our dreams. Gone simply because... Because? Let's not talk about it. I want to talk about it. I want you to go over everything with me so it'll all be clear, so I'll know where I stand and what to do next. Danny, what a strange thing for you to say. What is there to go over? There's a lot of things to go over. I think what we both need is a drink. I'm into that. Help me up. Have you had your dinner? Yeah. Well, I haven't. Wait till I see what's in the kitchen. Either. You know how it is, using this place only once a week on my day off. Sure. I think I'll run down to the corner and get something and bring it up here. What would you like to drink? I don't care. Beer? All right, I'll see if they have some on ice. i better lock this after me. Afraid I'll get out, Ruth? Oh, no, Mr. Nearing. Afraid somebody might get in.
I heard her come in, but I guess she went out. Thanks. What do you want? You think you're a pretty smart girl, don't you? Meaning what? Tipping your boyfriend off last night that we're going to move in on him? How would I know that? Besides, if you'll take the trouble to check, you'll find that I was in New Jericho last night. Well, if you were, then you can't be living uptown under the name of Virginia Morrison. What? Virginia Morrison. That's the name over the doorbell where he was hiding out. You mean he didn't mention Virginia? He doesn't know any Virginias. Oh, no. Rats like Danny Nearing never cheat. They may carve up helpless old men and steal their dough, but they never, never know any Virginias when they're going around with dames named Ruth. Oh, no. I know that one, that old jealousy gag. Boyfriend chisels. Girl, wised up by sympathetic officer of the law, burns and tells all. If you've come all the way down here to shake the mothballs out of that one, you've wasted your time. Commissioner wants to see me fine. I hope the record interviews are out. Oh, this won't take up much of your time. I know just how far the law allows you to go, and this is as far as you're going without a warrant. You're just making things tough for yourself. Good night. Take your foot out of the door. I think I'm going to have you picked up as a material witness. Well, fine. Get Virginia, too. Here's your beer. Oh, I see you found the clippings. I've been saving them for you. Anything there you haven't seen before? Yes, quite a lot. Ruth, you don't believe that I killed him, do you? Danny, I wasn't there. Where were you? In the bar, mixing drinks for Bill and Alma, as usual. Bill and Alma? Yes, he was in her sitting room, also, as usual. They swore they heard you and Dietrich yelling at each other all the way upstairs. They couldn't have. I was in the next room, and I didn't hear anything. Oh, Dan, if only you hadn't run away. But that was my fault. It was the worst possible advice. But I thought... That I did it? Dan, it doesn't matter. I don't care whether you killed him or not. Then you will help me? <laughs> you don't have to ask me that. I love you. I'll help you get away if it's the last thing I ever do. You really mean that? With all my heart. Good. Danny. Yes? Could you hear what Marucci was saying to me out in the hall? Yeah, some of it. Why do you look at me like that? Virginia. Oh, Virginia, yes. Yes, I heard that. Well, whose apartment were you hiding in? Uh, a friend of mine. I mean, a girlfriend of a friend of mine. Name's Virginia. Oh. She wasn't there. She was out of town. He let me use the place. That's that name over the doorbell, Virginia Morrison. Is that all she is to you? Just a name over a doorbell? That's all. All right, Danny. <laughs> you ought to have a good sock in the jaw. <laughs> Go ahead, sock me. Danny, I'll go through anything for you, but never lie to me. Ruth, I didn't kill Dietrich. I couldn't have. I'm not a murderer. The me that's inside wouldn't let me kill anyone. But I gotta find out. How? I'm going up to New Jericho. What? Danny, you're crazy. Sooner or later, the police are going to catch up with me. I've got to find out what I can before they do. No. No, I won't let you. You're going to help me. You said a minute ago you'd go through anything for me. All right, prove it. But, but Bill and Alma, don't you see they're trying to pin this on you? Why? Well, you know why. Because they'll inherit everything if they can keep suspicion away from themselves. You mean one of them did it? I don't know, but who else could it have been? There was only you and me and the cook. 
to find out whether they did it or not. Somewhere in that house is the right answer, and I've got to find it. We've got to find it. I I've just come from there, and tomorrow's my day off. What'll they say? You'll have to think up something good. What trains are there? Well, there's one at 9.25, I think, but... 9.25. Danny. Danny! That's the one we'll be on. I don't think I should answer that question unless my attorney is present. That's your privilege, Mr. Devick. Bill, don't talk like a ninny. After all, this is just an informal little get-together to help me, as district attorney of Jericho County, tie up the loose ends of my report for the grand jury. I have nothing to add to what I've already told you. You ain't told us very much, Mr. Devick. No. For example, I'm still not quite sure where you all were when the crime occurred. I was getting ready for bed. Brushing your teeth and uh, whatnot? Exactly. How long has it been your habit to brush your teeth in Mrs. Dietrich's private sitting room? Look here, Stillwell. Bill. Deposition of Ruth Dillon, made in part. Young Mr. Bill was with Mrs. Dietrich in her upstairs sitting room. They told me to go down to the bar and mix two bourbon highballs, as usual. They also asked me to look and see if Mr. Harry Dietrich was still in the living room. Now, surely, Mr. Dietrich, in the light of what you've just told She's me... She's lying. That would be perjury, Mr. Dietrich. That there is a sworn statement. She'd do anything to protect Nearing. She's crazy about him. Yes, we have ample proof of that. At the moment, though, let us confine ourselves to the situation in your home as it existed prior to your brother's murder. Situation? He means you and me, Bill. Alma, you don't know what you're saying. Oh, yes, I do. Bill and I have been in love with each other for a long time, Mr. Stillwell. Of course, it's all been perfectly proper. I was on the point of discussing a divorce arrangement with my husband when he... Uh... He didn't know then. Oh, oh, no. No, we've always been extremely careful. Uh, not to hurt him, I mean. And yet, the day before he was killed, he'd instructed his lawyer to draw up a new will, cutting you off with a dollar. I wonder why. Of course, he was dead before the new will could be executed. Oh, poor Harry. Hmm. You're familiar, I suppose, with the amount of the estate? More or less. More or less, about $250,000. Really? Money, money, money. The root of all evil. Especially if you ain't got none. What's that? Oh, nothing. Not a darn thing. I'm just philosophizing it myself. Uh, tell me, Mrs. Diedrich, have you ever discussed this matter with your late husband's brother? You don't have to answer that question, Alma. I don't intend to. I think you're rather exceeding your authority at this point, Mr. Stillwell. We're not in court, please remember. You misinterpret my question, Mrs. Diedrich. Do I? Perhaps from now on you'd better address your questions to our attorney. Definitely. As you wish. And uh, thank you so much for coming. Hello, Joe. I thought you were staying down in the city tonight. You're just the people I want to see. It's very late and I'm very tired, Mr. Marucci. Well, there's a couple of questions I want to ask you about your maid, Ruth Dillon. But Mrs. Diedrich and her brother-in-law have just declined to answer any further questions, except through their lawyer. This is a night off, isn't it? You're supposed to be in town? I just saw her down at the station getting off the 925. Oh. Any idea why she should be coming back? Not in the least. Good night, Mr. Marucci. I still say that dame ought to be picked up and held as a material witness. No! Mrs. Diedrich maintains that if we allow the girl to move about freely, she might accidentally tip us off as to where Nearing is hiding out. Well, there's some logic in that. Well, you're the boss. Got a gun up at the house? Yes. Keep it handy. And uh, lock your bedroom door. You mean there's apt to be trouble? I hope so. Quick and plentiful. I'm getting sick and tired of the way this case is being run. If that'll be all. Yes, until I can get in touch with your lawyer. Good night. Good night. When the Dillon dame got off the train, she caught a ride to the Diedrich house on a truck. So what? So I'd like to find out if she finished the ride alone or if she picked up somebody further on. all right they're out where do you think they are well you know them when they go out the country club or just park somewhere having a little talk about life we've lots of time let me see that light what now i just want to look around now that we're here what do you think you're going to find for heaven's sakes i don't know 
See, now, this would be the living room, of course. You ought to know, after all the months you've worked here. I get a little confused in the dark. That doesn't make any more sense than some of the other things you've been saying. It's a front door? Yes, just where it's been for the last 50 years. The bar and solarium over there and the alcove where... Where it happened? Yes. You certainly don't want to go back in there, do you? It's just where I do want to go. You'll go alone? Why? Only two things would take anybody in there. A morbid mind or a completely hard boy way of looking at life. I don't happen to have either. Oh, I'm hard boy. Or insane. You wouldn't have come back here if you weren't. Tell you what, Ruth, go to the bar and get me a shot of brandy, will you? I'm not feeling as hard boiled as you think. Right now, I'm not so sure what I think. No lights, remember. Don't go too far, don't be gone too long. What is it? What happened? You heard me. How could I help it? Do you suppose if there'd been anybody upstairs, they'd have heard? Naturally. Well, you remember, you said on the night of the murder you didn't hear anything from the bar, but Bill and Alma swore they did, and they were all the way upstairs. Proving what? Well, proving that you're right, that nobody yelled at all. Do you mean to say that you scared me out of a year's growth just to you, you? What's the matter with you? You're going to fly off the handle this way. You're not going to be much help. What do you expect me to do when you play tricks like that on me? Oh, Dan. Dan, don't do a thing like that again. All right, I promise. You see, I just had to try it. Now, how about my drink? I ought to mix you a Mickey. <laughs> There's an old woman in there. She saw me. Oh, that's only Grandma Dietrich silly here. Grandma Dietrich? You're certainly not worried about her. Well, she'll tell everybody she saw me. Say, what is the matter with you, anyway? Ever since I dragged you in off the street this evening, you've been making some of the strangest cracks. Well, you know what a terrible strain I've been under. I know, but getting all upset about a harmless old woman who... What is it? Tell me, what's happened to you? I get frightened when you say such things. It, it sounds like you're cracking up. All right, I'll tell you. I hadn't wanted to tell you because it's not easy to believe. But on the street the other day, I was hit on the head. Oh, Danny. I did, I, I swear. It was something from, from a building. And you haven't been able to remember anything since? To a certain extent, that's exactly right. Especially about the Dietrichs. No, you got to believe me, Ruth. Oh, I do, And you got to try to help me remember. Now, there are certain questions that'll sound nonsensical. Sure, any little thing you want. Ruth. Too bad you weren't hit on the head before Harry Dietrich was killed. Oh, Dan, I'm sorry. I shouldn't have said that. Forgive me. Kiss me and forgive me. I've got to look around some more. Don't 
Don't be frightened. I wouldn't hurt you. You know who I am? Danny Nearing. I, I want to talk to you. Harry Dietrich was your son, wasn't he? No, I didn't kill him. I couldn't have. I want you to know that. I've come back to this house with the police practically breathing down my neck to find who did. I don't know where to start. I don't know what to do. I need someone to help me, and there isn't any. I didn't realize you can't talk. You would help me if you could. Is light too strong? Sorry. Yeah. Better? You understand everything I say, don't you? You mean you do? One blink means yes. Two blinks could mean no, then, couldn't it? Well, now we're getting somewhere. Mrs. Dietrich, I'm going to ask you a lot of questions. You can answer yes or no just like that. One blink for yes. Two blinks for... Danny, what are you up to now? What's that lamp lit for? Are you crazy? No, wait a minute. That's all right. I've drawn the blinds. I've just made a discovery. I think I found a way to talk to her. What? We've worked out a system. One blink for yes, two blinks for no. Now, watch this. Oh, Danny, now, leave her alone. Me... She's sick. Would you like me to turn your pillow? It's a shame the way they neglect us since Harry died. She really ought to have a nurse. I don't know what she'll do now that we're leaving. Leaving? Yes. No. Once I'm... you've satisfied yourself that there's nothing in this house that can help you, and if the police don't grab you, we're going away. I, I know a place in Colorado that's... Well, fine chance we've got to get to Colorado with every road in the state being watched. We can do anything with enough money. Okay. And I've got some. I've saved it for us. Listen. What's that? There's a car coming up the drive. It's Alma and Bill. Now we're in for it. I'll put the car away. Have you got your key? Yes. You might have a drink ready for me when I get in. All right. Oh, good evening, Mrs. Dietrich. What are you doing back from town? Well, I, I have something I want to talk to you about. It must be tremendously important to have brought you back on your night off. It is. Well, as soon as you've finished fussing with Grandma, you'll find me in the sunroom. Good night, Grandma. Oh, Ruth. Yes, Mrs. Dietrich. Uh, Ruth, how did this happen to be here? Oh, I'm sorry, that's mine. Uh, the reason I came up here tonight was to tell you that I'm leaving. You're leaving? Yes. Well, I hope you don't plan to go too far away, because the police might not approve exactly. I can go anywhere I please. They have my statement. A 
I'll sneak you through the kitchen, into the yard, and join you as soon as I can. Better turn out that light. Be careful. We'll try it again later, tomorrow. First chance I get. Oh, good evening, Mr. Dietrich. Well, I heard you'd come back from town. Who told you? Joe Marucci. He seems to be quite fascinated by your movements. I can't say that I blame him. Mrs. Dietrich's waiting for me at the bar. Oh, do you mind if I join you? How did this happen? Oh, I dropped it. Why? Well, I, um, I was getting a little brandy for Grandmother Dietrich when I, I heard a noise that startled me. What sort of a noise? Well, it sounded like a cry, and it came from the alcove. Nonsense. So you helped yourself to another drink, two of them. One was for your mother-in-law, Mrs. Dietrich. I see, of course. You're a clever girl, Ruth. I always suspected as much. What is all this? What was it you were saying a few minutes ago about leaving? Oh, just that. I'm getting married. Married? Who to? After all, Mr. Dietrich, that's rather my business, don't you think? Who's going to be the best man? Danny Nearing? I don't have to take that sort of thing from you, and I don't intend to. Shut up, Bill. You're quite right. I'd like to go to bed now, Mrs. Dietrich, if you don't mind. Very well. As to your leaving, I'll naturally expect you to stay until I can make other arrangements. And if I were you, I think I'd tell the police where you're going. Thank you, I will. Good night. Good night. Maybe you'll give me a short synopsis of what this is all about. Wait. Bill. I found this in the hall. She said it was hers. Well, smoking cigarettes all over the house and breaking glasses. She's been having quite an evening for herself, hasn't she? But that's not the point. It's not her cigarette. It, it couldn't be. What makes you think so? Because she always wears a little lipstick and there isn't any on that. I wonder if that's what Marucci meant when he asked me if I had a gun in the house. Maybe we'd better telephone the police and have them search the grounds. Nervous? I'm only thinking of you. Get me the sheriff's office. The line is dead. But, but he can't be. The operator answered you. He's dead now. You'd better drive into town and get the sheriff. And leave you all alone? My hero. If you have any sense, you'll just go upstairs and lock your bedroom door, as Marucci suggested. You'll stand guard outside, I suppose. No. I think I'll take a bath and curl up with a nice warm revolver. Ruth? Ruth! Well? Penny, they suspect something. You've got to get out of here now. It isn't safe for you to stay another minute. Staying here till I find what I came for. Oh, damn. Danny, please, if you love me, get away from here before it's too late. No. Listen, use your head. Go back to town and wait. I'll check out of here tomorrow and meet you. We'll pick up a car and start west. It's, it's what we always wanted to do. No, no, no. Where'll I stay tonight? Danny, you're a stubborn fool. Where'll I stay? All right. There's a greenhouse at the end of the garden. No one ever goes near it. On the grounds? But you said they suspect something is up. What if they phone the police? Well, they won't. Not tonight. All right. Goodbye. Danny. Lovely day.
That girl's smarter than we gave her credit for being. There she goes, back in her regular daily routine with Grandma. Just as though nothing at all had happened last night. Yes, all the months she's been working here. I've never been able to get anything out of her, but yes, Mr. Diedrich, and no, Mr. Diedrich. Not that you haven't tried. If you cherish any fond hopes of leading me and the bulk of your brother's estate down that long red carpet, you'd better start disciplining that wandering eye of yours. Oh, behave. Behave. Has the man fixed the phone yet? Yes, he just left. Well, you're going to telephone the police, you're going to drive down. Well, I'm feeling rich and lazy. I think I'll phone. There you are, honey, nice and cozy in the sun. Dan, are you there? I thought you'd never come. Stay back, they'll see you from the house. I brought you a sandwich. That's all I could get. They've been watching me like a pair of hawks. Thanks. Did you get any sleep? Oh, sure. Sometimes for as much as 15 minutes at a stretch, with my head on a sack of fertilizer and my feet in a lawnmower. What, um... What are your plans? I'll stay here till it gets dark. It's the only thing I can do. The uh, police are liable to come. That'll be nice. Ruth. What? Do you think you could go back to the house and get me a pencil and paper without attracting attention? What for? Never mind what for. I think I've discovered something. What is it, Danny? Tell me. I'll tell you later. Can you get me that pencil and paper or can't you? Yes, I think so. If it's that important to you. If it wasn't, I wouldn't ask you. All right, Danny. Now, you be a good girl till I come back. Whatever you do, stay out of sight. Don't worry, I will. Mrs. Dietrich, will you talk to me with your eyes if I show you how? Listen carefully. Now, I'm going through the alphabet. When I come to the letter you want, you blink once. We'll be able to spell out words. Understand? First, do you know anything about how your son died? You know who killed him? Would you tell me? Why not? You mean you want to spell out your reasons? All right. A. You mean the first letter of the word is A. Second, A, B, C, D, E, F. A, F is the word after? No, all right, we'll try again. A, B, C. R-A-I-D. Afraid. You're afraid. Who are you afraid of? Danny, get back. Oh, wait a minute. Wait. Marucci and the sheriff are here. Did you bring me that paper and pencil? No, there wasn't time. I thought it was more important to warn you. All right, you warn me. Now leave her here and go back and get them, please. You're out of your mind. I've got to take her back to the house. They might come looking for me and find you. No, I'll Ruth. see what's going on. But for heaven's sake, whatever you do, keep undercover until Ruth. you hear from me. Come back. A minute or two more won't matter. She was just going to tell me the name of the murderer. Ruth. Well, all those shenanigans last night add up to just one thing. Nearing's around here someplace and a girl knows where. Why would he be sucker enough to come back here? It's easy. They say she's given notice. 
He's got all that dough he swiped when he knifed your husband. They figure on beating it someplace, and they just think New Jericho's a better jumping off place in the city. Not that they'll get very far. No, sir. We'll get out a posse and surround the grounds. No, sir. We won't get out no posse, and we won't surround no grounds. We won't do any snooping around here, and we won't bother our girlfriend with any more questions. Would you mind telling us just where you intend to go from here? We're going back to New Jericho, and we're going to sit tight until tonight. Then, about 8.30 tonight... Oh, Ruth, if Mr. Marucci or the sheriff's office telephones, tell him we'll be at the country club. Yes, Mrs. Dietrich. And I hope we don't find cigarettes and broken glasses lying around as we did last night. You won't, Mrs. Dietrich. So good? So far. Don't you ever get wise, eh? What was there to get wise to? We're going to a dinner party at the country club. Uh -huh. By the way, Marucci, if you will allow me to make a suggestion. If you do happen to run across Danny Nearing, take my advice and shoot first. You'd like that, huh? Okay, folks, get moving. Tell him. Stark, raving mad. I know. All day long, hour after hour, swelling in that shed. Not a drop of water, every nerve on my body on edge, and nothing happening. Well, darling, something's going to happen now. We're taking the other car and getting out of here. Everything's ready. The bags are packed, dark glasses. And... No, Ruth. Danny. Danny, please don't say that. Believe me, I know what's best for us. We'll... We'll talk about it later. Come on, Danny, please. There's food in the kitchen, and while you're eating, I'll get out of my uniform and pick up my bag. There's nobody going to interrupt us this time. I want you to tell me who killed your son. There's nothing to be afraid of. I promise the moment you tell me, no matter who it is, I'll phone the police and have them move in fast. I'll give you the letters. And you signal to me the way we were doing this morning. A. B. C. D. This is Dietrich. Listen to me. Open your eyes. Please. Please. You're an old woman. You haven't much longer to live. Do you want me sent to the chair for something I didn't do? I couldn't have done. Was it Bill? Did he want his brother out of the way because of Alma? No, it wasn't Bill. Then it was Alma. To be free, to get his money. Was it because she wanted a divorce and he wouldn't give her one? No, that's wrong, too. You're not telling the truth. It must have been one of them. Who else was in the house? Who else could it have been?
Well, I hope they're satisfied. Ruth. You certainly asked for it. You didn't. You. Why? He came in, found me taking the money out of the drawer. He hit me. It was a struggle. I, I reached for the first thing handy. It happened to be a knife. But how, how did she know? Yes, I knew she saw me. I came running in here afterwards. The door was open. I, I knew she'd seen me in the mirror. You realize she couldn't talk? You ran back to the bar. Yes, that's right. Is it... Is it going to make any difference? What? You and me. It couldn't. Oh, then I don't care what happens. You love me, nothing else matters. I was trying to get that money for you, for us. You always said you would never marry me unless we had some money. I didn't mean to kill him, Danny. I'm not bad. I'm not a killer. Neither am I. When the police catch up with us, who are you going to let them arrest? Danny. Who? Well, they're not going to catch up with us. We'll, we'll hide. We'll get out of the country. We'll, we'll fool them somehow. There isn't a chance. We can make a run for it. I'm not running. I don't have to now. You're going to let them arrest me? What else can I do? I've taken a lot from you, Danny, because I loved you and I thought you loved me. I don't love you. I've only known you two days. I'm not the man you think I am. I'm not Danny Nearing. My name is Frank Thompson and I'm married to Virginia Morrison, that name over the doorbell. She's my wife. That's what you've been building up to all along, is it? This, this trick memory stuff, this not remembering things here at the house and all. I tried to tell you there was an accident and somehow I became Danny Nearing. I built up a life as Danny Nearing. And then with that blow on the head the other day, I became Frank Thompson again. What it, what it really amounts to is that, that you've met this other woman and you're trying to brush me off with this, this phony alibi. Oh, Danny. After all, we've been to each other. After I stole for you. Killed a man because I loved you. What kind of a love is it that would send me running away from a crime you committed? That would have stood by and let the police take me away to the electric chair? All right, Mr. Thompson, I guess it's my party from now on. I'm sorry, I'll help you all I can, you know. I'll handle it without any help from you, thanks. Ruth! Ruth! That isn't the answer, Ruth. Do you know a better one, Mr. Thompson? Danny. Danny. Hold me. Danny. Danny. I'm going to die, Danny. Hello, Pink Shot. You're a little late. Oh, I wouldn't say that. Danny didn't do it. Ask Grandma. All right. I'll ask Grandma. Isn't there something we can do? Danny? Yes. Danny. All that business about... You being married. You, you were only kidding, weren't you? You don't love anybody but me, do 